Welcome, friends, to Occultus Anonymous uh, once again. Um, you'll notice that the positions have changed if you're joining us for the first time. Uh, we're taking a short break from the craziness that is Mage the Awakening um, to do a series of mini-series. Um, and the first one in these mini-series is the Modifius Star Trek Adventures uh, run by yours truly. Uh, we're visiting yes. once again the crew of the uh, USS Curie on their three-year mission to explore deep space in a semi-accompanied uh, mission uh, into unknown territory. It's been a lot of fun so far. I'm looking forward to picking it up. Uh, we are brought to you today uh, by Roll20 and sponsors like you, um, specifically Zoltan, Vortex Falcon 00, Trexalor, Thomas, Taryn, Shexara, Shane, Secret FFL, Sean, Ryan, Ryafio, Puppeteer, Porter, Boog, Perry, Other Guy, Noba, Mozart D Minor, Moku Moku, and then just Moku, uh, Ms. Grumpy, <laughs> Milo V3, Michael, Melissa, Long Live the Queen, Crazy Man 1772, Klaus, Cat Feathers, Jules Best Boy, <laughs> uh, Josh, John, uh, John with an H, um, the second one, there's a John and then a John with an H, uh, Jenny, James, George, Funzu Suru, uh, Suru Ali, email, uh, Doggo Deloon, Clara, Chris, uh, Buck, Brandished Genitalia. Yes. If you're wondering where that name comes from, join us on Discord. <laughs> um, Bernie, Alsrit, Alexander, Al, and Adele. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. It really means a lot to us and helps us do things like uh, buy new art um, and replace broken equipment and things like that and helps keep us on the air. Um, plus, we sort of bask in that reflective love, and we really appreciate it. Um, okay, that was the Rule 20 Patreon sponsorship. Rules are so we're playing the uh, Star Trek Adventures by uh, Modifius. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, basically the lower numbers are better. Uh, 20s are really bad. That's like a natural one in D and D, and one is like a uh, crit natural 20 in D and D. If you're looking for that, so the lower numbers are always going to be better. Um, Difficulty numbers are sort of generated on the fly based on the character's stats um, and that kind of stuff. And they um, have a discipline and a stat, and we combine them two to come up with the difficulty numbers as we're going through the game. Um, we are using the Star Trek inter er, um, intellectual property, which is um, a very fertile ground, and there's a lot of detail, and it's this kind of thing that lends itself to that detail. Um, and there are people that are really into that, and I 100% get it. Uh, but that's not what this story is about. This um, the intellectual uh, intellectual property of Star Trek are the paint and canvas that we are using to paint a word picture for you guys to enjoy. So we're not too worried about what ship was where, when, and what exact crew numbers are, and what the fighter complement is of that particular frame, um, and that kind of stuff. We're more interested in the story side of things, and that's what we're uh, focusing on here. Last time, when we joined the crew of the USS Curie, um, we found the ship adrift in space with the crew apparently whisked away with no warning. Well, perhaps some warning because there were some yellow alerts uh, on around the ship. Uh, but the quarters were empty, food was apparently being carried in trays and just dropped, and there was no sign of anyone on board. Um, the only voice on board was the frantic voice of the captain um, of the USS Syracuse, urgently trying to raise um, uh, Captain Tuchelor. My love. And then we cut to um, uh, Commander Kitneyel lying prone, having just had his bell rung in some sort of sand floored arena with a cheering crowd around. Um, and the opponent that he was facing off against was his own captain, who apparently did not recognize him. Uh, Commander Kitneyel himself had no recollection of anything that happened up until the point where he came to um, on the sandy ground. He knew he was a Starfleet officer. He knew he was the first officer of the USS Curity, but everything in between that period of time just seemed to have been gone. Um, so he took a dive and let the captain win, um, thus avoiding further injury, uh, but figured out that it was the electrostaves that you guys are, electrostaves that you were using to fight with that broke him out of his, um, whatever it was that had a lock on his memories. Uh, thinking quickly, he devised uh, a means to basically build a, a joy buzzer that he could carry in the palm of his hand, 
and then uh, proceed to go around and shock members of the crew into a wakefulness. Um, and as a result, um, all the members of the bridge crew um, and uh, some of the senior staff have been freed from this sort of mental state that they were in. They found themselves on this planet, a civilized, highly advanced planet. Um, or, well, I say planet because of course you're on a planet, but the only place they see is this one city. And large sections of the city are unoccupied, um, apparently still left in ruins. So there's a portion of the city that is fully li lived in um, and uh, has advanced technology. And uh, the city is ruled by these giant humanoid, humanish looking females um, who uh, um, are in some sort of elevated strata, social strata above everyone else. The rest of the population of the city completely appear to be races of folks that have shown up very similar to the crew of the Kuri. They just appear one day and get incorporated into their society. Um, minds are wiped and uh, they become um, adoring servants of the queens. Um, apparently this has been going on for some time. Some investigation by uh, Commander Kitney revealed that um, uh, this civilization appears to have been built on the on the bones of an earlier civilization that's much older, but this has been here for quite some time. And they've been collecting these sh and strip one is by and they get the crew snack and they become servants of the queens. The whole society appears to be organized around improving the queens through uh, genetic manipulation is the theory that Dr. Hudson has been working on. Um, and I think I covered most of the salient details and we can probably roll that intro too. Space, the final frontier. These are the brave adventures of the Starship Curie, whose three-year mission is to explore new worlds, to seek out new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. All right. <laughs> You guys can bully me with beer if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, so we're uh, back into things. Um, I thought we'd pick up with a bit of a flashback. Um, and the camera, um, as the credits roll past, the camera zooms in on um, uh, Commander Kitneal's office. Uh, and Commander Kitneal... Uh, uh, this is uh, to, to place it in time is after the subspace anomaly incident mm -hmm. um, mm. that uh, caused a lot of stress and some minor damage to the ship. But uh, through the heroic efforts of the engineering crew, managed to save um, from what could have been a disaster. Um, so it's uh, some period of time after that. Um, I don't want to necessarily put it into a pigeonhole for exactly when. Um, but you're in your office, you're going about your duties. Um, the crew has sort of settled down after that. It was definitely a little bit rocky after the um, um, after that incident there was a lot of stress and the, the engineering crew in particular needed some you know careful uh, managing afterwards to um, deal with the tensions and stuff like that but the uh, counselors that you have on board were a huge help um, and you know that the captain has been making a point to send back to Starfleet how much of a help having counselors on board has been for this mission because you've had to rely on them several times already um, you uh had an appointment that you're going to go and meet somebody and you get up and you walk out uh, of your office and almost run into uh, Jiffus. Um, he's standing there looking mildly agitated and you have the impression that he has been there for some time. Um, just sort of lurking outside of your door. Um, he looks up and <laughs> snaps to attention. Oh, uh, Commander. Um, forgive me, I didn't mean to disturb you. You didn't disturb uh, then, me. And then he is about to turn away and start to walk away, uh, looking like he's been caught. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, he doesn't get to get away at that point. It's like, no, you didn't disturb me. In fact, I was coming to see you, but you clearly had something to uh, to say. So, uh, uh, well, let's start with your thing. Uh, if, if this is a convenient time. Yeah, I was coming to see you. Uh, I, I will note, Commander Kidneal was not coming to see Jiffus. Mm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> may, may we sit down, Captain? Or, uh, Commander? Uh, sure, it was my a, office. There was a Craig error. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so he came in and he sits and uh, you sort of just 
he's obviously struggling with something, so you kind of let him. Oh yeah, lead sit. I got patience of a thousand something years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but for Jiffus, who is always so tightly controlled, um, he's. It looks to comparatively, he's falling apart. Right. He's fidgeting and he's plucking at his data pad and. Um, I mean, the fact that he, he looked agitated before, yeah. How yeah, unbecoming um, of a Vulcan. Especially for Jiffus, who's mm. probably the most tightly wound Vulcan you've ever seen. Um, but finally, he uh, just um, sets down his data pad in his lap and he just kind of looks at you and you sort of get a helpless kind of vibe from him. And he says, I. I've been struggling um, recently. After the incident with the subspace anomalies, I want to adjust the playbook. Mm -hmm. um, and on a, a first pass at it, um, I was uh, I had an outline for an additional nineteen chapters. Absolutely. And I realized all of the training that I've taken, the years that I've spent studying and learning, all of that time and effort, and it didn't prepare me at all for the things that we have encountered out here. I, I don't know how to proceed with my playbook because you can't plan for what you don't know and there's so much out here that we just don't know Jiffus that is the exact purpose of our mission we are learning these things we are experiencing these things and we are sharing that information with the rest of the universe, the galaxy, whoever we can share this information with so that they can learn and build off of our experiences. You've added 19 chapters to your playbook, which, yes, may never help us again. But if one more person, one more crew member, one more ship is saved because of information that we have gathered, experiences that we have made it through, and we pass it on, and worse comes to worst, the Curie being lost to all hands. Somebody will come behind us, look at what happened to us, and they will learn from us. Even in our worst scenario, losing the entire ship, we will have saved lives. We will have forwarded science. It is true that some of the most instructional information we received from the previous five-year missions were in the recovered salvage buoys from the ships that were lost. I, uh, I had done the outline for the 19 chapters, and, and then I deleted it. Can't recover those files? Well, there didn't seem to be much point. I can't I can't expect my crew to spend four hours in an emergency going through decision trees for something that that may never actually be considered in the decision tree. The best you can do is prepare. At the time of having I would rather have a tool and not need it than need it and not have it. So Every you're saying the tool. <laughs> so you're saying that the playbook would be a worthy investment in time. There's two aspects to this, Jiffus. Um, personally, no, the playbook does not help me. It may not even help your crew, but it does seem to help you. It helps organize your thoughts. It helps place down decision trees. It helps you 
come up with future scenarios based off of the experiences that we have. That clearly helps you. That alone makes it worth doing, so long as it doesn't detract from your other duties. This is like asking me whether or not I find the poker game useful. Yes, of course I find it useful. A, as I enjoy it, and B, I get to know my crew. I hadn't considered that. My intent in writing the playbook was so that if I were ever incapacitated or lost, that the engineering crew can continue on and still benefit from my experience and knowledge. And it will do that, won't it? At least but it, in some situations. But it can certainly be pared down. And instead of trying to expect my crew to have a prepared plan for every contingency, which is obviously not possible, I could use it to organize my thoughts and prepare reports on the things that we do find and discover. And if and then nothing. he s- sits up and uh, picks up his data pad and sort of adjusts his shirt. Thank you, Commander. Of course. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, and then he rises and walks stiffly to the door and turns and gives you a head nod and exit your chambers. While that's happening on, it's sort of concurrently, well, actually, this is also a flashback, but this is going to be in sick bay with Dr. Hudson. This is after the incident um, with the uh, pathogen. Mm. Um, the crew is mostly the horny virus. <laughs> well, I mean, the lowered inhibitions virus, because yeah. some people just like spent eight hours stuffing themselves with cake in the galley. Right? It, 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 it manifested off is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily it was the horny virus. It was definitely lowered inhibitions. Listen, the vi- um, that virus is <laughs> that virus is what leads to someone brandishing their genitalia necessarily. <laughs> 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 oh my. That's going to live on forever. Um, I'm delighted. So you've been finding lately that you've been much busier than normal. Just in the last few days. Um, patients have been coming in and been asking for you specifically. Um, and normally this doesn't happen. Like you have a staff to take care of all of this. You have a head nurse um, that handles most of that. But lately people are asking for you specifically. Um, so you've had to set aside your work that you were doing, important work, to once again detail and deal with the the non-important problems that the crew bring to you. Uh, so you're dealing with this yeoman right now, um, who's like just a minor procedure. It's nothing too serious, but they've asked you specifically, um, and so that's sort of where we pick up. Um, and you're going about your business. Do you have any questions, or do you want to investigate that at all, or why isn't your staff <laughs> handling this? Um, what is my nurse Lorac, right? Nurse Lorac. Uh, can we say she's there? Oh, uh, sure. She's uh, almost always there. Right. Um, nurse, is everything okay in the sh- on the ship with regards to our staff? Um, she turns to you. Um, and just because of your prodigious intellect, she doesn't fit the mental outline you have of how she is when she's talking to you. She's much more stiff than normal. Her hands are like folded behind her back in a very typical Vulcan sort of manner. And she says in a very flat voice, uh, there's nothing that I'm aware of. Is my staff not trusted among the ship currently? Uh, the yeoman looks up and oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not that, no, not, not at all. I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you, Doctor, I shouldn't have. You haven't bothered me, I'm just wondering. Um, and she kind of glances over at Nurse uh, Lurak and then uh, back to you. No, it, 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 it's nothing, I'm sorry that I took you away from something. I have permission to speak freely, yeoman. Uh, she glances at Lurak again. 
just it it used to be um nice coming here um we, we felt cared for but it's been much more sterile uh lately and if we're gonna get sterile then we, we might as well talk to you um and nurse Lorab just sort of sits there impassively there's nothing on her face um Your words ring as what I wish was a compliment to me, but I understand that that is not how they are meant. And yeah, he's gonna like really kind of scrutinize uh, Nurse Lorak and try and give me a um, feeling, I guess. <laughs> uh, insight in medicine, I guess, would work. Sounds great. I'm actually good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, by by nature of being during a surgery, does surgery count for the focus? No. <laughs> this is definitely interpersonal relations. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right. Uh, but if there is, a, if you have a focus on something like related to memory or recollection, that might mm. apply. No. Oh, oh wow! Oh, wow. Sure. So um, I will tell you that for free, just with the one success, and you can um, um, obtain oh, information. I, I had focus click. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Be. should be three i did roll okay. a one and a two on two days 20. so All right so that's still great um so it occurs to you right off the bat and you never noticed at the time because you're more comfortable in that situation anyway right there's nurse lorak has always made you a little bit uncomfortable because she's especially well, for vulcan she's very touchy yeah she's always like putting a hand on your shoulder or handing you know a touch of the hand and that kind of stuff she's been very um, emotive and um touchy for a Vulcan. And it occurs to you that she hasn't touched you in several days. Um, and her normal good mornings doctor and stuff like that have been much more comfortable for you because it's <laughs> been very much more detached and sterile and Professional. sort of where, where Dr. Hudson tends to come from. I think that would be fair to say. Um, and you are free to obtain information. You have two extra momentum if you want it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a under you know the the duration of this scene? I guess is how I kind of how I'm seeing this like studying her mm -hmm. uh, in that. And, and this can be like time. more patients come through. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. over the course of you know and a couple hours or whatever, mm -hmm. is there any obvious like physical uh, symptoms of something going on? Um, not without um, without a, a, an actual examination. You're not able to see anything, but there isn't anything overtly wrong that you can tell. That's okay. not like she's, you know, um, uh, displaying abnormal you know, Like behavior. a secret brain, brain bug hiding in her hair or anything. Right, yeah, there, nothing like that. That, that um, Nothing obvious anyway in the uh, All right. Um... You have one more um, question to ask, if you wish. Uh, I, don't know. I, I guess the can the question be like in character? Yeah. Okay. Um, then it's like at I guess like a lunch break essentially. Um, like he has staff bring a meal. To, to us and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and um, basically just like asks a question as friendly as possible but plain, plainly demands to know what's what's up with her essentially just to help guide, guide I have a couple questions for you are you planning on 
arranging for the sick bay to be just the two of you? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, can I get a social sort of role? You can pitch me on how you want to approach it. Just to see how effective you are at breaking down her apparent barriers. Um, for him, this feels very daring. Sure. Um, and then uh, under the, the guise of, like, this is affecting our work. It feels like so, command. But, during command but from can, a position of authority? Right. Or as a co-worker, you could do it like daring medicine, if you want. I mean, either way, that's what I'm going to roll. But yeah, okay. that, that was more the, like, he, he is genuinely trying to be personable and find out what's wrong, essentially. But it, but he's And you have doctor's kind of, orders, so you can listen yeah. for command anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah okay. Trying to be personable, but this is right. new for him. Right. Um, yes. I think this is... Um, I'm, I'm going to argue that this is lead by example of like he is trying to be a, a more human and empathetic doctor to find out um, like because I think he definitely has some insecurities every now and then about his ability to like rationalize and perceive the emotions of those around him and and his own emotions and stuff like that sometimes too so um, Perfect. Um, 100% very, on board. Yeah, it feels very Star Starfleet sort mm -hmm. of thing. Ooh. No. Ooh. Um, I'm going to offer you a fail at a cost if you wish. Um, succeed at a cost, you mean? Yeah, pardon me. Yeah, I said. To, yeah. I'm heavily medicated. Um, <laughs> you uh, can succeed the cost. So the the downside is that it could possibly affect your relationship with Nurse Lorac moving forward. Mm. Basically, um, having to push yourself, push too like, hard, force yeah. yourself past your boundaries to get to the info you're looking for. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll I'm okay you with that. that. Okay. Um, so you keep pressing her and keep pressing her, and she's um, built some solid walls mentally, but finally you, you know, just confront her, uh, like you're not behaving the way you normally do right. what's going on. Um, and that's when she sort of deflates a little bit. Um, and she says, I have had cause to... I know you know that um, part of the reason I ostracized myself and my family by not going to the Vulcan Science Academy was because I wanted to learn more about other cultures and to embrace those other cultures. Um, what recent experiences have illustrated for me that that was perhaps not a well-advised decision. Um, that the reason, there are reasons why my people have embraced logic and reason. Um, and mm -hmm. Not their emotion. The pathogen. It's that a was a, a catalyst. Um, but I under I understand more now why my people are the way they are. How do you mean? Why in our past, my people brought themselves to the very brink of extinction. We were violent and passionate. Mm -hmm. And that violence and passion nearly destroyed us. So too um, did us humans. Yes, you have had numerous wars, but you, you've never been as a species on the edge of extinction. There's always been threats to your extinction, but you've never, your people have never teetered on the brink of a viable population. What we have, and the way we got out of that situation was through reason and logic and um, the shedding of our emotional selves and I questioned that, and that's why I became a, a nurse in Starfleet. But I think that perhaps that was a mistake. That 
as a people, we Vulcans need to have a tight brain on that. We need to embrace logic and reason for the safety of ourselves and the safety of those around us. Speaking plainly, nurse, I I respect your rationalization of this, of what has happened, uh, of the things that you have been through both personally and culturally. I think you are doing yourself a disservice, though, to phrase it like this and to, from my perspective, pretend to be something that you are not. You were made a part of my staff and a part of this crew because you are a wonderful counterbalance to myself. That seems struck a nerve. Um, and you see her facade sort of crack for a moment. Um, but she doesn't say I, anything. I cannot hope to fully understand everything that you're going that you are going through. I can only recommend that we have a cadre of essentially the best counselors available to Starfleet aboard this ship. And if you wish, we can make time to make time from your duties to have ample time with them. Um, and he like takes the time to ac actually like reach out and like grab her hand. Ooh. Um, that act which is so out of character for Dr. Hudson. Because um, this isn't a, this isn't an examination sort of no. reach out and touch. No. This is an attempt to establish- this is a friend. An emotional link. Yeah, I mean, very much so. Like, um, And that sort of bursts whatever composure she was trying to hold on to. And um, her hand just kind of comes up to her mouth. And then when she puts it down, she smiles. I, I have always respected you, Dr. Hudson, and if me trying to be different is that important to you, then I will speak to the council. I think that will do you very that would, will do you some good, honestly. But if there's anything to be learned from my own experience, it is that cultural norms can be a shackle as much as a guiding light. And I believe that transcends all of the species of Starfleet. It's important what you just said to hear my own beliefs and philosophy echoed back to me by someone else. Good. No, seeing as my schedule is extremely full for the rest of the day, yes, of I course. should prepare. <laughs> um, and she stands up as you do but she does she sort of hesitates halfway there but then we just, just sort of gives your shoulders please Good. thank you doctor awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright oh, yeah. um, now at the end of the last uh, session um, we're off to leave early mm -hmm. um, so I'll going to roll the clock back just a little bit. And there was a lot of information that came out at the end of last session. That's uh, sort of been a big deluge of information. Um, we still have, um, and uh, Ralph, you weren't part of that, but I, hopefully you yeah. watched the episode to fill in. We have three Bungantum on the board. 
I will offer those to you as an obtain information. Wonderful. To use Great. one, two, three, or none. Mm -hmm. You you asked for flashbacks. I did have a brief one that might oh. be relevant right before we use those momentum. If that's Absolutely, okay. sure. Absolutely. Great. So, and I think you'll be able to improvise this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have uh, the crew live in my head, so that should be no problem. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So you're, you're uh, caught in there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd say a few weeks after Doctor Hudson is taking care of the virus, right, mm -hmm. and the captain is back to himself. Um, at one point, he strides onto the bridge uh, while the commander is in charge, and walks straight up to the yeoman and says, "Yeoman." My quarters, or not my quarters, my ready room, now! And then just turns around and walks away. Um, just random yeoman, or is this uh, your yeoman? No, Narkek. Yeoman Narkek. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, and uh, Narkek gets this gleam in their eye. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bit of a roll to their swagger as they uh, follow yeah. after. <laughs> um, like, they're really looking forward to it. And uh, uh -huh. comes I love them. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, uh, Captain Trichelor closes the door mm -hmm. and then um, puts on a sound filter so that the distinct words would be muffled, sure. but the magnitude of the voices would still be there. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he starts blathering in a high voice, not actually saying anything really significant. Like, blah, 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 blah. And then invites the uh, Narkek to sit down mm -hmm. and then gets behind um, his desk, right? Which is probably, you know, baffling to Yeoman Narkek. Yeah, Narkek's like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, and then, and, then, and then leans over the desk and says, I have a scheme. One elbow on the desk, Narkek leans forward. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> to tell. One thing I've observed despite the time we've spent together is that Commander Kitneyall, for good reason, is still suspicious of you. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> not suspicious, just does not approve. Let's be very clear. <laughs> Fair enough. Carry that's on. what that's what that's what Chichalor suggests, right? Um not to dissuade you from this scheme, but yes. I will say that Commander Kitneyall and I have definitely worked out an understanding of one another. Okay, great. What? I don't let that. me that. Don't let that. Right, wars. Yeah. <laughs> don't let that stop a scheme. Yeah. <laughs> what this is, is I've realized that in the event that I am, hmm, how do I say this, uh, indisposed again, uh, it would be useful for some of your insight into my perspectives to be present in the event that I am not able to provide it to the commander. And the reason why I mention this is the commander has a particular way of dealing with things, which I trust absolutely. The one thing I will note is that when I trust the commander to accomplish what he believes to be the best thing for the crew and for myself, that occasionally it's useful for him to hear a dissenting voice so that he can argue against it and either reinforce his position or on his own recognize the possible risks. Because despite his tremendous wisdom and experience, he's still capable of missing some spots, just as I am. So what I'd like for you to do is pay close attention to the commander and look for gaps in how they approach particular decisions. And if it is ever the case that it seems like I not, might not be present to provide a, a possible counter. Consider it to be my advanced order and request of you provide that in my stead. Do you think you could do that? Um, <laughs> the, the yeoman is going to need to think about this very carefully. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Strokes their chin for a moment. I get what you're saying, and I'm 100% on board. Um, I am always ready to tell somebody what they're doing wrong. <laughs> but I think it's an important part of that to have a buy-in from the other party. Of course. Uh, you and I worked out our 
understanding with one another and the commander and I have a different understanding from one another. Indeed. Is, is the commander involved in this or are you just planning on pranking him? It won't be a prank. Let me put it this okay. way. I anticipate that at some point in the future, something nearly as threatening as what happened before might befall this crew. We are braving new frontiers. We are constantly exposing ourselves to danger. And I care deeply about this crew. I also care deeply about Commander Kitneal. And I want to do everything in my power to make sure that I provide them with any resources available to me, especially those, and he points at Yeoman Narkic, that I trust and value highly. So I'm not suggesting that you do something specific. I think you've gotten the point that I that I intend, which is that if you are ever in a position to provide useful advice to Commander Kitnyal, please do not hesitate. Sam, this is less of a, a scheme than a plan. Well, it doesn't involve Commander Kitnyal's direct participation, so technically it is a scheme. True, <laughs> um, but by putting the onus on me, I think I will interpret your instructions to provide my particular brand of insight in a manner that would be more palatable to Commander Kitney, while still fulfilling the purpose that you see behind it. Yes, that works for me. Then my, I think we have an understanding. I want to put one this one in writing there, Captain, just so he has it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And just uh, just as a um, you know set dressing around this sort of discussion, um, um, Yeoman Narkek definitely has a different relationship with you than he does with the captain. Oh, he is one hundred percent, or they are one hundred percent comfortable, you know, busting into the ready room, blah, 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 completely in the captain's face, and the captain's right back, and that's <laughs> the dynamic they have, and they're both really enjoying it. <laughs> um, Narkek is never that way with you um, because you have some boundaries that you clearly decide that I'm in charge. You can provide input and guidance and suggestions, but you ever get in my face, you're going in the break. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so his uh, Narkek's dealings with you are much more respectful and suggestive rather than, you know, a terror strip off of. So, uh, um, so that's sort of the dressing behind all, all of oh, the yeah. scene. And uh, Narkek is, I, I fully understand your intent, Captain, and it would be my pleasure to do everything I can to help Commander Kitneal. Thank you. Hey, I I'm... trust it will be necessary at some point. Given definitely. the excitement we've already had, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to pull in Twitch chat's comments here of, I give you permission to speak freely to Commander Kitneal. <laughs> Does Kitneal know about this? Nope. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of the way it was. That's the way it was set up initially. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't, remember, it wasn't a, hey, whenever you want. Right. It's mm -hmm. a, if there's a dire situation and he needs to hear it, or they need yeah. to hear it, I would like you to do that, and I will deal with the consequences later. You just will have to deal with them in the immediate. That's right. Yep, no problem. Um, and that sounds like a good spot for the scene. Is there Perfect, anything else yes. anyone wanted to fit in for a flashback before we pick up with the current action? All right. Um, so we're back to the current situation. The crew is still mostly incorporated into the society. So most of your crew has no idea that they're Starfleet personnel or that they have a ship. Mm -hmm. um, as far as they know, they're just part of the society and who exists to elevate the queens and serve the queens and love the queens. Um, so you've managed to free the senior staff, but you haven't freeing 270 odd people is going to be a, a long term thing, unless you come up with some other way uh, to do it. And you had a few possible avenues there. We'll pick up with uh, the captain as we we're just finishing off from last session. So you have this three momentum that you may obtain information if you wish. Do you have an understanding of everything that was discussed, or do you need me to go over it? For the most part, yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so you may ask th up to three questions of your choice. You mean all of us, or you mean the captain? You, the captain. Yeah, oh, everybody okay. you can, everybody already had their. Up, I think we did our yeah. questioning last week. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, they all had obtained information. Period. Wonderful. Okay, cool, great. 
Um, so the first question, and uh, I might be skipping over a question that wasn't asked, which is um, any known weaknesses of the queens? Mm. No weaknesses. Um, and you could also interpret that as uh, not physical weaknesses, but things that uh, it makes it easier to ply them, manipulate them, persuade them, that kind of thing. Their motivations and desires, right? Like, I will tell you that they are very much um, consensus based. Okay. There is a structure for the queens and then different queens have different responsibilities and there's higher orders of queens and lower orders of queens just based on experience and knowledge. It mm -hmm. seems to be mostly a meritocracy mm -hmm. um, uh, sort of among them. So when somebody is doing well, the other queens will elevate them to more responsibility, for example. Um, there isn't, as far as you can tell, a lot of friction between them. Mm -hmm. um, you could uh, there might be that you're just not aware of but there's no overt friction between them um and and they're definitely a cooperating and it's almost like they're they're part of this whole thing to improve the queens as well oh, like they want this goal yes um you, and you're not sure exactly what that means or what the end state is but they're definitely this is something they want to do they're not doing this because they have to they, they're doing this because they want to Okay, wonderful. And and they view those people that are working for them in the servants as people that are helping them do what they want to accomplish. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. That's useful. The second question I have is, are there any external imports other than the people and perhaps occasional technology taken from ships? Do they have a standing relationship with any cultures, merchants, anyone that's regularly bringing them something they need? Um, so I will, s there's no sign that they have a normalized relations with any other species that you can tell. Mm. There's all sorts of species, many of whom you've never seen before, mm. um, that are present in the city, uh, but they all appear to arrive in a similar fashion to what you have. As far as you can tell, based on the evidence you have in front of you, there's no outside contact. Okay. So even the queens don't know where these people come from that show up. They just mm. materialize in an auditorium, Ooh. are processed and indoctrinated. How intriguing. You do know that there's references to a caretaker. You've yeah. got some clues about that from a few different places. Um, that seems to exist outside of the social hierarchy. Mm -hmm. but also serves the queens in some sort of relationship that you're not 100% clear on. Okay. Um, so it could be that this caretaker um, provides these new specimens mm, that yeah. then go through the trials and at certain points either succeed or are washed out. And if they're elevated, they are, in theory, used to improve the the base species of the queen somehow. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, as far as you can tell, there's no ongoing relations, no communications. Um, Although the technology level is certainly high enough that there could be, but you don't see any evidence of it happening. You don't okay. have trade ships flying in or stuff mm -hmm. like that, yeah. Um, yeah, there's no ships moving at all. Like, um, In fact, um, I'll give you this one as a freebie. There's no port facilities. Ah, uh, okay. Um, there is the no city. mechanism for a ship to land here. Mm. Um, there's no mechanism that they would use to trade unless it was just through transporters, which would be for large amounts of cargo, uh, either their technology for transporting is way advanced from yours, um, or it just happened. Because from your perspective, transporting large amounts of cargo is um, is an inefficient process. Just from the energy constraints at all, yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense. All right. My third question is, um, the word caretaker in this context, is it spelled um, with a Q? I uh, know it's. it's uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, no, that's not my real question. Um, <laughs> my real question is: uh, Are there any subterranean chambers or environments that are accessible? Um, there are some uh, that appear to be storehouses and things like that, um, but they don't go particularly deep. Okay. Uh, as far as you can tell, and you, like you guys aren't restricted from moving around the city. Um, there's sections that are closed off because they're like in disrepair and falling apart mm. and they're literally ruins. Uh, yeah. But it's not like there's armed guards or anything keeping you from nosing around if you wanted to. You're considered like free citizens of the society who have duties and responsibilities to fulfill. In your particular case, you're still competing in the combat trials. Makes sense. Um, 
but you're free to wander around the city as, uh, and you're considered like trusted members of the society unless you display otherwise. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's enough for me. And that's enough for you. Okay. Um, I'll leave that last momentum on the board. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's where we're at. So with that information sort of gathered and disseminated, because you guys, it's easy enough for you guys to meet with each other. Uh, we're going to uh, pick up with uh, Lieutenant Zikulin. Oh, and I inadvertently referred you as a commander last episode, but your rank is actually a lieutenant. Um, and you're in the quarters of your queen, um, her personal chambers, attending her for an evening meal. Um, not an unusual um, circumstance. As her most trusted servant, that's sort of your role and your honor um, to serve on her uh, however she needs you. Most of the time, it's overseeing the arenas and the gladiators and things like that. Um, um, but you're also uh, back in her quarters from time to time. Um, and this particular evening, she seems a little distracted. Um, conversation has been carrying on just like normal. Um, but uh, every now and then, she seems to be lost in thought. And then finally, she turns to you and she says, Please have a seat. Um, it's not that unusual. Sometimes when she wanted to have a like a personal conversation with you, she would ask you to come and sit at the table with her. Um, and they have uh, special high chairs for you folks to be able to sit at their table. Is this all people? Yes. Um, so um, you pull up a chair and uh, climb up onto it. And um, she's looking a little... Definitely pensive from what you've seen her. The queens tend, tend to be very sure of themselves. The one sort of trait that's common on all is, is a confidence that that they're doing the right thing. Um, what you're seeing definitely from your perspective, doubt on her face. Mm. Is something bothering you, Mickey? Do you need anything? Your perception is what brought you my attention in the first place. You have possess such a sharp mind and, and have such confidence. You carry yourself with surety. You have in you the makings of a queen. There it is. You're pleasing to look upon, of course, but it, I chose you for far more than that. You fought with such passion and skill in the opening bouts, but you also have such a sharp mind and a decisive wit. So I intervened, this is my right and selected you as a servant. And I have benefited from your service, um, as have we all. It was a good decision to pull you out. The so, arena has never run so smoothly. Did I get pulled out of... A f or I wouldn't remember, right? Because we don't know what happened while we were... Under? No. Okay. No. But lately I've begun to feel not regret, but a certain sadness that because of my interference you will not have the opportunity to ascend. Do you wish for me to re-enter? No, not really. You've become invaluable and make what I do so much better to elevate me just by your presence. I rise because I have you underneath me lifting me up further. But were you to join to the line of queens, you would gain immortality. And my sisters and I would be improved for it. He tops to take a drink of wine, sets a glass down, and then she looks at you and she says, If you ask it of me, I will return you to the trials. It is a very generous offer. 
Um, I might like to consider it for a while before deciding. Of course. I understand that it's a, a big decision. And I am, I am of two minds. I hope that you ask me, and I also hope that you don't. You are too valuable to lose. But because of your value, you should, you should ascend. And if I return to the trials and lose? I do not foresee that happening. But if you return to the trials and lose, then you would enter into my service again. As a queen, it is my right to select whoever I wish to serve me. I would serve and select you again. And then she sort of stops. And again and again. <laughs> as if like um, as if a new thought had occurred to her. If you if you wanted to. And she seems like surprised at herself for saying that. Would you want to return to my service if you did not succeed in the trials? Yes, absolutely. She seems sort of simultaneously happy but confused. Like she doesn't have a context for processing this conversation or even understands why she brought it up. Well, well good, then, then that is what will happen if you wish to enter and you do not need to decide immediately. No, well, take as long as you like. Knowing that I will return to your service if I do not ascend, uh, it's rid of any concern I might have had. So, I'll gladly return and try my hand at ascension. Um, I will ask you for a social role. You can pitch me however you want to do it, but off the top of my head, I'm kind of thinking um, insight um, command. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> but you can pitch me something else if you... Um, I was thinking, like, presence and security, just kind of sure. as a, like, a very physical sort of flex is, like, I will go be your champion, essentially. Okay, okay. That's cool. Can't believe the nine-foot-tall woman is a bottom. Jesus. <laughs> And yeah, none of my. They're not all fit. Dimitrescu. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's only one. But I mean, not true. But two success. Um, so that's a success. Um, and uh, you have an extra amount in there if you wish. You can either bank it or do an obtain information. Um, I will tell you just for the success. Um, before you decide. Um that she's happy that you would go back into the trials, but also regrets making you the offer. Mm. Um, because if you succeed in the trials and then move on to the next one, she may lose the ability to, like, if another queen spots you and decides, no, I'm taking oh, yeah. her, then you go to their service. Because it's just right now we're in her trial. That's right. We'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you, so you have one momentum if you wish to spend or not. Um, <laughs> I want to ask her about how. No, it can be an in character question, but it can also be an out of character question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, um, I want to know how much longer this section of the trial is. Like, how far into the combat trials we are? Yeah, how many more rounds do we have to go before we are? decided right um I, i'm not going to charge momentum for that because it's just straight conversation that's within your duties and stuff that would be an expected sort of thing um she says a, another couple of uh, 
a um, couple weeks. And then this batch will move on. Okay, in that case, I think I'll bank it. What I really want to do is uh, get some sort of a computer access again, because I want to try to find information on the caretaker. Um, I, that would certainly a useful, like a, a use for the um, the extra momentum if you wanted to use it that way. Yeah, I want to. I mean, not like when I'm with her, of course. Yeah. But uh, but I do want to go because so far I've found like a caretaker firewall blocking me, right? Yeah. I want to see if there's anything in the system about caretakers. The caretaker. Okay. Um, I will allow you to explore that possibility if you spend that momentum on creating an opportunity. Mm. Uh, yeah, sure. So that would be like, get a moment alone or something, have something pull her away. Um, I would actually give you better uh, based on the dynamics of the conversation and um, her conflict and confusion over things that she doesn't seem equipped to process. There's sort of a vulnerability moment there where you could actually get her to help you get access to the computer. Um, so you express curiosity about the caretaker. Yeah, um, mentioned that I've heard the servitors talk about um, it. And uh, that your own access to the computer system is fairly limited, uh, in which case she would volunteer to um, give you access, like to use her access to gain more information about the caretaker if you would. Oh, yes. Um, and she refers to it as a, a very important entity um, who manages the entire uh, Ascension Protocol. Um, and, and she just sort of takes it as an, um, that you understand what that means somehow, uh, even though you don't have any context for it. Um, but have she's you really... Met it? Um, it isn't a, a meat sort of situation, um, but come with me. And she uh, takes you uh, into her um, study and uh, fires up the computer, and it like it's fancier than the ones you guys have on the U.S. security. All the graphic displays and that kind of stuff, like so, screens start popping up. Um, wow. Think sort of uh, next generation level technology compared to the, the original series. Dang, cool. Um, and she you know, says, "What do you what do you want to know?" I want to know. Mm -hmm. what they are what the I guess ascension why mm. I mean, just you, know, you can we can sort out the details and how it works in gameplay later but if you give yeah. what your intention is um I'm trying to find out, like, how they pick targets. Why did they grab us? But I want to, I don't want a word to end away that makes it clear that I'm no longer brainwashed. Sure. Um, so where do new um, uh, new prospects come from? Yeah. Would be a way to phrase it. Um, and she doesn't, like, when you ask her that, like, you know, I've never really thought about it before. It's just, it's always, for as long as I can remember, every now and then there's... Um, an alert sound, and new prospects arrive in the processing facility. Um, but let's see what we can dig up. Um, and she starts, because you've made her curious, um, she starts digging around and uh, pulls us some uh, files. Give me a... Um, there's a few different ways to slice this, but let's call this a reason security or a reason science, depending on what angle you want to approach it from. Uh, but feel free to pitch me something else. Yeah, I'll go with reason science. Sure. And I have a new talent. It's called mm -hmm. testing out a theory. Okay. That if I have succeeded on a role related to this in the previous, at some point in the adventure, I get another D twenty. Sure. 
Um, and, and I, I just checked, say that this I, applies. Yeah, and I had succeeded already. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you following at home, um, I in the interim I have given everyone a uh, um, a spotlight advancement um, to uh, adjust their characters. So that's where some of these new talents have come from. How does the infiltration focus apply? Because they're basically trying to break into their system. But you're not trying to be surreptitious about it. She's basically giving you access. I guess so, so, yeah. Collecting data from a bunch of different places and making some inferences from that. My reason science, two successes. Only did one. Um, so you have an extra you can bank or spend. Uh, I will tell you that based on what you're seeing, the caretaker um, has for lack of a better word, and don't read anything into it, has tendrils into most aspects of this society, either directly or indirectly. Um, it's the one that um, does the uh, matching of um, opponents in the arena. It's the one that sets the trials at the various other levels. It's the one that works out the rankings. Because uh, it's not necessarily a success or failure based on your win or loss. It's how you perform during, and there's some complicated analysis that gets done in there. Um, but it's also into um, um, power management and uh, food production. So it's sort of, um, there's references to the caretaker in many different levels of the society in, the, in an infrastructure sort of way, um, which I would say very easily leads you to conclusion that this must be um, either a very complicated automation system or possibly a true AI. Some sort of super intelligence. Putting it on the Curie. <laughs> not, sure necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily a super intelligence, um, but it could be like um, an expert system. Level. Yeah, something capable of handling everything. At, a, at an infrastructure level, yes. It's not able to do the nitty gritty actually moving things around. Um, but it's the one that develops the plans, gets the results back, formulates new plans. So it doesn't have like a physical component as far as you can tell based on the data that you're collecting in your little research session with the queen. It just seems to be a presence. It's definitely a presence and it's also monitoring and collecting data from numerous sources. Some of which aren't even actually clear to you how it gets this data. Um, so that's what you get for your success. Um, you may obtain information if you wish. I was trying to find like how it found tributes. Tributes? What are we? Combatants? Um, Initiates? Uh, yeah, prospects. That's mm -hmm. Um, And I lost the thread because... Can you um, ask me a question again? Uh, how is it finding its prospects? Um, you don't... Uh, in your... Digging with the Queen, you find no information on where the prospects come from. Um, as far as anyone in the records that you're perusing, which cover quite a span of time, there's no references that you can find anywhere to where they come from, how these prospects are selected. They just show up and are dumped into the machine. And the machine produces I, um, um, superior specimens is sort of the goal of the whole infrastructure is to produce uh, um, superior specimens which are then which then ascend and get incorporated somehow into the queens in some way um, and then a new generation of queens arrive so this happens in cycles um, so your queen while you're doing all this research, she's processing this information as well. She's, where, where do they come from? We're very where, where varied. Come from? Yeah. There are people here that are nothing like each other. And and we've had, we've had entire generations of, of candidates that not a single one managed the trials successfully. We, we treat everyone that comes through the processing facility as, as a potential to elevate us, but, but there's been like some that have arrived that have obviously 
not been sufficient to why even make them attempt it? Where do they come from? Ferengi. <laughs> I, I don't understand him. I never thought about it before. Why didn't I think about it before? Brains up. It's easy to overlook something that is normal. As long as I've been alive, I, I've just known that it happens. How long have you been alive? I have been alive for 127 turns of the sun. Um, basic information, it's, it's about um, 1.1 days here to a uh, Earth solar day. So not too far off of Earth's rotation. Yeah, almost equivalent. But there are like there are no other settlements on the planet. We have records of ruins, and but there's no other. Where do they come from? Has anyone been to the ruins? Yes, my sisters and I have, from time to time, um, done explorations and investigations. Sometimes a caretaker will um, send us out um, to um, to investigate and do archaeological studies and things like that. Um, sometimes it appears to be looking for something, and then when it finds it, it's happy, and then we continue on. I, d I think I will not need you for the rest of the night. Very well. Yes, I do. I want to leave her baffled and curious. Mm. Um, and when you leave, she's just kind of sitting at her desk, holding her head, and she's like flipping through files, throwing up more and more windows as you um, quietly exit her chambers. Congratulations, you've started a queen towards awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anything you wish to do with that, or should we move on to, we're almost at break time. It might be a good spot to wrap up for a moment, unless there's something you want to fit in. And it for me mostly, I just want to find a way back and relay that to everyone else. Um, so I'm back in the trials. Do I live in the barracks now? Well, that hasn't, like the paperwork has been filed. Oh, she hasn't officially yet. put it back in yet. Okay. That's right. Yeah. You would end up back uh, in the barracks. Um, at least until the combat trials are over, and then you'll move on to one of the other trials. So, yeah, I just have to find um, uh, Nurchad and uh, Captain Chichuler. Um to be winding down. You know, a little sore and bruised from the day's combats and stuff, but your plan to manipulate things to arrange for you two to be in the final confrontation for the trial. And then a new challenge um, approaches. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, dude! Ah. Uh... <laughs> I will give you guys, both of you, this sort of a group task um, that you're trying to manipulate things. So either control or daring mm -hmm. and fitness uh, and security or. Um, uh, yeah, control or daring and security, I think, to do that. Cool. That sounds good. Uh, unless you want to pitch me something else. You said security. I mean, if it's socially manipulative, you know, at the pool, I recommend. Yeah, right? this is more this is more physical prowess but also strategizing and planning that's totally fine yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it, it, it works for me daring security okay you said control could also work control or security as well yeah um i would even allow insight security if you wanted to like be listen more the, 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 the captain and i sure. we, we yeah. are daring we, <laughs> not insightful people we know what we do <laughs> Brandishing your genitalia left, right, and center. That's right. <laughs> if you're wondering what that means, join us on this Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just so you know, Craig, I did include yeah. my focus because of team dynamics. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the way it should oh, be. And, and that could manifest like you're talking up the guy that you want to win and mm. saying something to just sort of take the window of the sails of the guy. Oh, you want yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of aspects to that. There's a lot of different ways to slice it up, but this is sort of an overall success of how you're manipulating. Well, especially Excellent. because, I mean, let, let's be honest, half of the majority of these and these people are our crew that are fighting. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, no, I know who wins this yeah. this fight. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Gotta be. Yeah, that token right. kind of makes your ass look fat there, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> right as they're headed out, yeah, exactly. just get into their head. And it's like, dude, what? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> this is a group roll, right? So we pool momentum or there's a momentum transfer over to the next subsequent roll. Um, a pool. OK, gotcha. Cool. Uh, I'm looking for how successful you guys are. Um, so this isn't a, a, you know, you definitely want to get a one, but the more you do, the better you guys are at it. Okay. Um, I, I don't know why, why daring and security didn't come up there, but anyway, that's the correct roll. Yeah, that's weird. Um, still got the right numbers. Right, so yeah, that's yeah, so the right numbers. Yep. Yeah. So with the super, um, uh, um, with the extra three successes, yeah, you guys are definitely like, you are, you know, Captain uh, Tuchelor is the conductor. And uh, Nerjad is uh, the lead violinist, right? First chair, you guys have got this orchestra humming to your tune. More of a trumpet um, guy, but sure. <laughs> I'm thinking more of the hierarchy of the orchestra. <laughs> I um, know it do be. Uh, and it's going very well. That Your plan to manipulate the outcome is, is uh, definitely proceeding very nicely. Excellent. Um, and we'll keep those three in sort of a bank towards that effect later. Sure. Wonderful. Um, now, if there's anything else anyone wants to fit in right before we wrap up for the break, um, speak up now. Otherwise, I think we'll take our break here. Um, where's my script? Ah, script. Uh, I don't do this on a regular basis. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, thanks for all the patrons. Join us on Discord at eating 2 <laughs> space. Wait, I'm too early for this. OK, so for Twitch guys, we'll be back in five, ten minutes or so. Um, for uh, YouTube guys, we'll see you in about two seconds. So that's right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I think that's it, right? Yep. Just jump right back <laughs> into it. Let me jump right back into it. And uh, so let's um, we just have a like a, a early evening meeting in the Gladiators barracks um, uh, where uh, Lieutenant Coleman, uh, Nurjad Kitnell, and um, um, Captain Chuchor compare notes on what they have found. And while that's going on, the camera does a fade cut over to the medical area. I do want to add in a um, real quick thing here, and it's mostly for Fluff, but Nurjad and the captain probably communicate via proxy and are not mm -hmm. ever seen like yeah, hanging the out together. Baby. Yeah, exactly. Gotta keep that kayfabe yeah. up. The kayfabe mm -hmm, is like, no, no, hate each other's guts. It. Yeah, after mm -hmm. after that one time, Kit Neal got knocked down. I see him in the ring, brother. That's right, yeah. Yep. <laughs> when, you, when you have the overseer of the arena in your pocket, Mm -hmm. It's not a problem for you guys to arrange to have a meeting with the three of you. Excellent. Um, so if there's some if there's some specific discussions or a scene you guys want to have with the three of you there, um, I don't know if some revelations have a particular impact that um, Ash wants to deliver, or you can cut to the oh, no. medical. Yeah, area. no, no, go to the medical one. I was just yeah. adding flavor. Sure. Um, so it's been another long day um, in a. It's a monotonous job in certain ex in certain respects but it's also kind of comfortable. Um, you relate, like, um, as somebody who sometimes has difficulty processing emotions and interpersonal relations and stuff like that, and it's sort of something you've been working on, this is definitely not stretching for you to be right. working with these folks. Um, uh, they are friendly and polite, but they're not um, overly dramatic is one way to look at it, I guess. Like, there's a lot of tension. In fact, uh, in the time that you've been working with them, like they're they're very in tune with one another. Uh, almost to the point where they're finishing sentences, or somebody will just start a sentence, and the other one will just know what they mean and mm. carry on, and the communication sort of becomes superfluous at that point. Um, we're talking, of course, about uh, for the folks at home. Uh, this is uh, Servitor Two Five One and Servitor Two Six Four, a male and uh, um, apparently female and male androids. Um, that don't exist within the social strata of the queens, but still serve them in some capacity that we haven't really defined. Um, and as you guys are sort of finishing up for the day, you know, the excitements of the uh, boats in the arena uh, have blown down. Um, Servitor 264, uh, the male one sort of comes over to you, says, um, 
What a thank you. It's been a um You're not like the others that come through here. You're, for one, you're highly intelligent. Um, and you have an understanding of the work we do far beyond most of the folks that have come through here. And it, it's been gratifying to work with you. Um, and then uh, Server 251 sort of comes up behind and say, yes, it's, it's, uh, we often feel like outsiders. People react to us differently, but you seem to just accept us. And it's it's been nice. Um, and Server Two Six Four um, carries on like for so long. It, it's I feel like we haven't been understood you know, like people look at us and and I feel like you're trying to put us into boxes and we just don't fit but you don't you don't do that and it's it's been nice um may I inquire one one thing you, you may ask us anything Our, is this the beginning of a romantic proposition <laughs> they, they look at each other and then look back at you and just for the lack of like the complete lack of comprehension on their face. Okay. You can under, you can infer that it's not. It has been it's my understanding that a deluge of compliments is often the proceedings of romantic interest. Uh, Super so two five one. Um, says, that that was certainly not our intent. Okay. We good. just merely wish to acknowledge qualities about you that we appreciate. Thank you. Um, that we are unfamiliar with. I see. I just strive to be the best version of myself possible. Um, and they both look at each other and smile and they turn back to you. And <laughs> we're smiling because that's what all this is for. I see. And yet... <laughs> I have been drummed out, so to speak. I, I, I wouldn't raise it in those terms. The, the queens need to be many things at once. As a crawler to that is they can't be specialists. But that doesn't mean that specialists aren't valued and important. Mm. You may not be, you may not have been selected as a candidate for ascension, but that doesn't mean that you don't have value to the queens or to society. It, it is not a failure to not ascend. Mm. Um, and Surgery 251, sort of earnestly, you do understand that. It isn't, it isn't a failure at all. It's important for any society to have specialists who are good at some things, but not good at everything. I Sometimes I think people lose sight of that. And if I am to be a specialist and better serve the Queens, being the best version of myself, I believe you're implying that there is much more to be done than resides within these walls of this clinic. They sort of look at each other and look back at you um, and sort of two six forces. Yes, actually. You're the first candidate that we've encountered with your exacting approach, your attention to detail. Um, your sharp and incisive mind. We were talking about the possibility of expanding your duties, if you're willing. 
vote to serve. Um, Surdu 251 sort of looks mildly unhappy with that statement. We know that that's the we all exist to serve the queens in some capacity, but we were we were hoping that this would be something that you would want to do. I see. There are certain duties that require skill, but there are certain other duties that require interest and a desire for the best outcome for the subjects. I see. My apologies. Um, I have had to learn to temper the way I speak in my life. Uh, not everyone appreciates the bluntness and specificity that my words often carry. And my goals of bettering myself are seen to others as conceited and overly ambitious sometimes. The experiences that you speak of are not unknown to us as well. I will strive in our dealings at least to be more forthright. And Sir 264 says, and, and just to be clear, that wasn't an admonishment in your part. It more a wish on our behalf. Um, the, the nature of the duties that we had in mind for you. Um, and uncharacteristically, sort of looks around. They're what all this is about. They're the foundation of everything that we do here. And if you don't want to be a part of that, that would be fine. And there's no pressure on oh, you to I accept. Very much do. Um, and they look at each other again, and you have the feeling that words are passing between them without being spoken. Um, and then um, Servitor 251 says, I'll finish up here. And Servitor 264 to you and says, why don't you and I take a little walk? Um, and uh, you guys leave the, the science facility um, and uh, head to the monorail. And it's a fairly short trip um, around the monorail. Uh, and you get off at a like a station that isn't normally used. Like you never see people coming to this destination that uh, Monorail usually just zips right past it. But for some reason, through no interaction on, that you saw, the train just comes to a stop here and the door is open and you guys get out. Um, and you come to, um, just looks like a plain old door and uh, Server 264 just um, extends a hand and places it on the wall and you don't see any, like there's no scan or there's no mechanism or anything, but the wall just sort of opens up and you're looking at a small, what looks like a lift. Could be a lift on the Curie. Mm. And uh, offers you to step inside. Um, and you do. There's no, the lifts on the uh, Curie are um, um, inertial dampen, but you still feel a little bit of a jolt of movement. You don't feel anything. Um, the doors close, and a couple of seconds later, they open up again, and you're looking at a completely different setting. Interesting. Uh, this is a very high tech. Just looking around, you see um, walls of holographic displays, um, most of which you don't have a context to judge what the data is that they're presenting. Um, and Server 264 just walks right past without even glancing at them. Uh, but this is like, um, I don't know, there might be a battle for you to appear nonchalant, but this is also like 
this is a candy store kind of there's so much going on around you and there's so much that have, that like this looks like a medical instrument of some kind that looks like it might even be a gene splicer and you're just walking past this stuff that looks so far beyond anything you've ever touched before and he's not even interested in it so how how would dr hudson react in that sort of situation are you focused on appearing nonchalant or absolutely not okay but it, he's also like not an exuberant person right so he just very plainly is like, this is entirely a different technological level than is on display in the city is it not yes i see uh this is preserved some of it's preserved some of it's rebuilt some of it has been maintained from the ancient one fascinating um and server 264 is 100 percent amenable to answer any questions you have as you guys are moving through like if you're like what is that and what does that do and he's totally prepared to spend the next yeah. hour just moving through this room answering sure. all of your questions very much so um so I mean, this is he basically promised that he would be more open and his curiosity mm -hmm. is a very genuine and b mm -hmm. might also be critical to the mission right um and I will give you a roll here to see what am I looking for? Like insight science? I think insight science. Um, but if you're interested in in Server 264, mm. if you want to get, if, like, if there would be an insight security aspect, depending on how the information you gain is going to depend on how you slice it. Sure. Um, I think he's so, yeah. Insight security to get about server two six four or about the equipment would be like insight science. I think the equipment is going to. I think okay. trying to understand the, uh, an android is a, a bit beyond him at this current juncture. Sure. Ooh, successes. Excellent. Um, so one success is uh, plenty. Um, you have one that you can bank or spend. I'll, before you decide, I will tell you um, that a lot of this uh, equipment has um, a lot to do with biology mm -hmm. um, and various aspects of it. Sure. Um, manipulating biology, understanding biology, treating biology, right. um, some of it even creating biology. Um, so. Um, they actually spends a fair bit of time talking about um, a gene splicer that they don't um, they that they, they don't take sections of DNA from other species and incorporate them. They use those traits and manipulate the queen's DNA to manifest those traits, Ooh. which, to Doctor Hudson's um, scientific mind is an understanding of the Queen's genome that far exceeds what Starfleet is capable of. Right. Like you understand that certain genes do certain things and expressing certain genes produces certain results, but they're talking about creating brand new traits right. by manipulating the genome directly as if it's not a big deal. This is... incredibly fascinating technology. Um, and Server 264 seems pleased. I thought you might find it interesting. I, I had hazard I had hazarded a guess that the ascended ones would factor into mm, the continuity of the queens but this is well, if not beyond my wildest dreams then certainly uh a, a stretch of a hypothesis uh were i to come up with a process of my own to do this um he gives you a s sort of a mona lisa smile like and you get a message, like you get the feeling that you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh boy. He says, 
let me show you the gestation chamber. Um, and you leave this area behind and you oh, enter into this other room, which is a... There's a series of large cylinders, um, about two dozen of them, 12 on each side of the room. Um, and there's, um, before you get to them, there's a sort of a, almost a foyer kind of area where there's a bunch of other equipment um, that just from a quick glance is very detail oriented. It's meant to be working on things at a very small scale. Um, and he says, this is where you produce each generation of queen. There are 24 produced each time and they become the next generation. And that is where their continuity comes from. And the, the baseline. Um, he smiles as, as a parent might smile at a very clever statement from a child. Not in a demeaning sort of way, right. but he's very proud of you that you made that leap. There are many questions you could have asked and you just asked one of the good ones. Yes. Um, and he says, come with me. Um, and he leads you to the far end of that chamber. And this, the other doors that you've been walking through don't really appear like doors. It's just sort of a, an opening kind of appears in a wall. Okay. This is a door. Mm. This is armored. This is protected. Mm. This looks like a vault. To keep someone out? To defend what is in. Okay. Um, and um, Surge 264 goes through several steps, um, different layers are unlocked, and you can interpret those as there's different security mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Um, um, can I try and sort of diagnose what some of these, the, the mechanisms by which some of these things are happening? Sure. Um, I'll get a reason science. Like bio biological scan from the servitor. You, mm. know. Um, you said reason science? Yep. Reason science would work. Cool. Uh, composure. You are kind of overwhelmed with everything going on. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll go for that. And, sure. and also, like, I'm doing some spy shit here at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd say composer focus absolutely works. Um, how many momentum is it to buy a d20? Uh, uh, one for your first, first one, one, is one, two for your yeah. second. I would like you still have one bank, by the way. Okay. I never asked you if you wanted to obtain information. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just go ahead and use that then. Three successes. Okay, so three successes. Uh, you only need the one, so I'll give you the, the information you have. Um, there's about a half a dozen different security mechanisms. Only about four of them are uh, um, are visibly presented during the unlocking sequence. Sure. So there could be some kind of a wireless signal or something that you're not right. aware of that isn't um, open and visible to you. But there's about six steps to getting um, the vault open. Um, that he goes through in a specific sequence. Okay. Okay. Um, you have. And this was sequence. this was less about this specific door and more like the process they use for yeah, the, yeah. the layers of security. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, uh, there's definitely um, an ocular scan was okay. one of the pieces, um, which and he's an android. You're not sure what an ocular scan would look like. Right for an Android, so it's not like a retina scan or something. There must be something else in there. Um, there was um, um, a handprint scan, but that could just be f surface details, or maybe it's reading yeah. something inside the hand. Yeah. Um, so there's a few different the RF sort of there. thing. Yeah, um, there's uh, some uh, a code that was entered um, into a computer panel that popped up sure. um, that was quite, quite long. Like yeah. he was using fingers uh, typing almost faster than you can see for several seconds. Um, and then there was a, ver um, a verbal component um, that had to be stated as well. Uh, and there was some pauses in there that indicated there were a couple other steps that you weren't able to track um, that took place as well. 
uh, and you have two extra momentum if you wanted to obtain information. And I believe you have the ability, because you spent momentum on a die, you get a free obtain information. So you can have up to three questions um, to ask. I think that's just... I know this. What's that? I've forgotten. I, I don't okay. know. It's fine. Um, so you can bank those two or you can obtain information. Yeah, let me uh, bank one and let me ask the question of what is something important that hasn't been directly pointed out to me? Hey, so the thing that's important that has not been directly pointed out to you is that there are sensors in this room, several of them. Um, presumably somebody or something is observing what's happening and they are probably part of the unlocking process. I see. Um, and if that's the case, then this someone or something would also be aware of your presence. Okay. 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 So with the unlock sequence done, um, this heavy metal door um, clunks with like power <laughs> and then sinks slowly into the door or into the floor. Oh, wow. Um, and there is a, just a massive walls, definitely shielding, um, but the chamber beyond is relatively thin. To get, like just, um, I don't want to get in specific, but it's like there's a 20 foot steel wall guarding a five foot wide passage. Interesting, okay. Um, and inside there is um, a small cylinder sort of hovering in the air. Uh, filled with liquid. Um, and Servitor 264, with a certain amount of reverence, says this is what it's all about. And starts to walk into the chamber. All of um, so you know, odd. Sure. Um, and apparently it seems to be that's what uh, Servitor 264 wanted you to do. So you walk into this small chamber. There's definitely a, a, an energy field. You feel it as you're passing through, it's similar to um, a biofield you would use in a surgery. Sure. Uh, for example, to isolate and secure and sanitize right. a patient. Um, and you can sort of feel it around you as you're in this room. So that it, it's as if there's no contaminants that are able to come off of you to invade this space. Oh, okay. You've got sort of a personal bubble around you that's isolating okay. you from this environment or isolating this environment from you. Mm -hmm. um, and the servitor says, this is the only surviving sample from the ancients. This is the baseline. We, we never use it, of course. Of course. We, re um, we, we replicate it. Of... But it's important to have that baseline to track changes. Each this generation is... is generated from the baseline? Generated from replicated samples of. Okay. But not produced in sequence from the previous generation. No. No genetic drift, other than what sometimes, is intended. Uh, sometimes it, uh, the plan sometimes um, involves reintegration. Sure. Um, Particularly viable. If, if there's a particularly successful queen, for example, right. um, then they may be selected for reintegration. I see. In which case, we treat her samples as if they were another subject. Hmm. But this is all we have of the ancients. This whole planet was once theirs. Do we know what happened? The caretaker is reluctant to speak about them. The caretaker only says that they ascended. And the caretaker is the one 
watching in the room up. Again, the sort of pride. Yes. The what caretaker has sensors. The caretaker. the caretaker is the one who manages this entire system. The infrastructure, the plan, the selection of traits, the trials themselves. The caretaker manages it all. What manner of being are they be able to do such? I'm trying to decide how he would put it. We have some theories, but we've never met the caretaker personally. Whoa. The caretaker speaks through messages um, and instructions that arrive on computer panels. But as far as Surgery 261 and I know, no one has ever spoken to the, creator, to the caretaker directly. But they are the mind behind everything that we do. Then I believe, my friend, you have just settled upon me a goal. Meet the caretaker. I admit I have, from time to time, felt such desires myself to to meet the individual who so loves the queens that they built all of this. To help them ascend once again. But there's duties to perform and tasks to do and... Of course. And so I console myself with enough that their love for the queens is what drives all of this. But I do share your curiosity. My sister and I are very curious by nature. Maybe one day we will meet the caretaker. Can be perhaps, perhaps one day soon. There's so many things I would like to say. Yeah, like out of character. <laughs> Very clear. Yeah, like put me back on my goddamn ship, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I totally get that from Doctor Hudson's point of view. But uh, Surgeon two, um, two Six Four, like speaking reverently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's this nameless, faceless, thankless individual who so loves these queens. Yeah, all that lost on Dr. Hudson a bit. This is yeah. the part that actually is hard for him to like get through, right? Where he's like, hmm, yeah, mm. okay, sure. <laughs> um, so with the approval of the caretaker, we would like to see you help birth the next generation of queens. Your insight and the ability to make inferences seems on a par or even beyond those of my sister and I. We would really appreciate your help. Cool. Uh, and turns and motions to leave the chamber where the sample is located. Sure. Um, and as you guys are leaving, the chamber seems to seal itself back up. Mm -hmm. There's no security engaged in, right. in relocking everything. It just seems to happen 
on its own. And he takes you back out into the gestation chamber. The trials will be over in a couple of weeks. And then the work down here will begin again. I see. You don't have to decide right away if you want to take some time and think about it. You have at least a couple of weeks until that work begins. Very well. Um, unless there's something else you want to fit in, that's probably a good spot to end that scene. Uh, how, and this can maybe be a Chris to Craig thing. How, yeah. how implied is it that this should remain like top fucking secret? Um, you know that the servitors are not secretive by nature. They have right. been very open and honest with any questions that you ask them. Right. Um, from a scientific point of view, they're probably programmed to be educators as well as okay. scientists and caregivers. Um, but you know from your experience that none of this is known beyond right. the servitor. Okay. Um, but having said that, they don't give you specific instructions on that. And this is just Drew's inference. I mean, everybody's brainwashed and mind wiped. So right. what's it matter? Right. Um, um, and then. Do I have a good enough sort of idea of how these sort of, I'm going to call them caretaker cams. Um, function that I could in other situations have an eye for them or something like that? Uh, given the successes you had, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you would uh, be able to, not necessarily freely, but you'd be definitely right. be able to be aware of them. Right. Um, and thinking back, there's sensors of similar types and styles pretty much everywhere in the city. Right. Um, but we can remember maybe find a secret place. You can think of two or three locations in the city so far, mostly in the uh, towards the unoccupied regions right. okay. that are not so surveilled. Uh, but getting to those locations would be impossible without a sensor being tripped. Right. Um, but right. given what you've learned today and what you've inferred, um, there is a uh, a metric buttload of data yeah. that this thing is processing in addition to all the other duties that it is currently engaged right. in. So it's yeah. possible it, it, either it's really advanced and is still able to process all that or there's sections of this data that it doesn't analyze directly. Right. But still has access to if it wants to go back in time, so to speak. Right. Okay. I think that's more the, the vibe that Dr. Hudson will fall onto is like, we're going to hope this thing is just shotgunning data and only pulling what it cares about because there's if it's real time analyzing everything that's happening in this entire city we're fucked there's a lot of conversations that yeah. thinking back of yeah, taking place exactly. within yeah 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 mm -hmm. okay. and then I'm, I'm all good there okay um do you want to have a conversation with the rest of your crew about this thing come up with a plan moving forward just collectively what do you guys how do you want to proceed from this point it's easy enough to over the next couple of days to socialize this information amongst right. you mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean he definitely did just keep it to himself mm -hmm. it's like um, mission critical information regardless of whether or not you know they can share it secretly right mm -hmm. um and it's also definitely possible uh, i don't think we've specifically talked about the rest of them uh, but you had a couple of your senior crew already freed from the right. the mine shackles. It would be easy enough to get the rest of your senior crew mm -hmm. um, surreptitiously get them out of their situation and brief them on what's going on if you wanted to do that. Because yeah, I, I know we, we definitely had... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who is it we had? We had uh, Shavor and... Uh, Levine. Levine. Yeah, and Jiffis. And Jiffis. Mm -hmm. And... And Yeoman Narkek. And okay. Yeoman Narkek. Um, so Nurse Larak is still um, enthralled, and Science Officer Matan, Lieutenant Matan, is still enthralled as well. 
But if you wanted to get those guys out, you could. Oh, Which definitely. We, when, we, when we have a chance and stuff like that. Yeah. If we have the opportunity, absolutely. Easy enough to, we'll just narratively flip that yeah, yeah. bit. And yep. Sounds good. They're now That's continuing cool. to go about their duties as best they can while being aware of the situation you guys are currently in. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. But yeah, like the, I don't know about the whole group, including senior staff, but like if the four of us can be together in one scene and yep. just essentially Dr. Hudson info dumps a bit and this with your now, and just I, for my context, this is in one of those unobserved areas. Sure. Mm -hmm. You want to. You mean the subterranean spots or the different ones? No, the, the non the non observed. The no, less the populated areas without the cameras. Right, right, yeah, the, the ones that Dr. Hudson confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, no. Okay. Because it just it's that seems more suspicious, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that seems right. like something that will make active so Native. for the scene because it's um neutral relatively neutral territory while we have this happen in the like the medical science area yeah, sure. excuse cool. that so um you guys convene a couple days later in that location mm -hmm. um, it's a quiet time there's no other patients in there um the two servitors are there but they're busy doing stuff off in another corner of the of the lab so it's easy enough for you guys to get some quiet time uh, to have a chat yeah it's it's presented to the group but it's very much like I think this is the best thing I could be doing to mm -hmm. further our goals here. And sure. it's more like sort of just not, I mean, asking permission, or but essentially just like asking the captain to tell him that, yeah, that's absolutely what you should be doing. <laughs> um, well, the captain would also say, let us remember that we also retain our Starfleet responsibilities. So this indeed is one of the best uses of your time, right. especially because it matches what we need to do to escape or understand the situation. This is, in effect, a ship wide away mission, and we should treat it that way. Good context. Um, can I just for uh, setting, are any of your other senior staff present for this meeting, or is it just you guys? Well, if there's any technological stuff, the captain would suggest that Jif is his present, despite his absolute trust in Dr. Hudson to make sense of it. Just because if there are possible insights that Jif is can gleam yeah. about the use of that technology to free people or put us in an advantageous position, the captain would consider it to be a strategic value. Sure. Um, and I'm not trying to push you one or the other. I'm just asking if they are present yeah. and then I'll mm -hmm. provide inputs for them. Yeah, he, he would leave it up to Dr. Hudson because he didn't see I any think, of it. I think right? Jif is yeah. good. Mm. I don't know how much. Yeah, I don't know if I bring the others rest. have to add. Because mm -hmm. also, we're trying not to be right. suspicious. Yeah. Obvious, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's just there is the precedent of Chichilor, Irilor, because he doesn't have his ring, um, requesting that Jiffus attend him at times yeah. mm -hmm. to aid him yeah, yeah. with his, you know, kit. Yeah, I think stuff. I think Jiffus being here makes sense, right? All right, cool. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So it's you guys and uh, Engineer Jiffus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jiffus would say so. I understand our situation, but what are our goals here? Are we just concerned about getting back to the ship with our crew? Uh, actually, or is it there more that we want to accomplish here? How much has uh, Brilla given us about the Queens? I, I would have told you all That's basically kind of everything I found out um, that we have this queen at least has become begun questioning becomes <clears throat> yeah uh, in that so case... like I'm not really willing to write them off as a people yeah because Kidney will, uh, hearing that Kidney will's shift from save the crew becomes uh, save the everybody here because clearly Call him a caretaker, call it a caretaker all you want. There's a lot of people here who do not seem entirely uh, <laughs> self self assertive and and being able to make their own decisions about stuff. They're you know, we literally have a ton of people who are mind wiped. Uh, and the queens are priority here. Creations. 
-hmm. They're not even mind controlled. They were made by this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and just to flavor that a little bit more, uh, Ken, uh, Commander Kit Neal had done some investigations that this society is, for all intents and purposes, stagnant. Mm -hmm. In the last hundred years, there has been virtually no change to the society at all. No growth. Um, it's like it's frozen in time from a development point of view. So while there may be new generations coming, they're all just basically walking the same paths everyone else. Same is culture, same science, same. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Chichalor uh, chimes in when when Kitneal suggests that and says, I agree that we wouldn't want to leave anyone in a state of non-consensual participation in the elevation of these people, whatever is happening, whatever the caretaker's goals are. I will assert that our chief responsibility in an away mission is to attend to the safety of our crew, not that anyone's forgetting that. So we need to make sure that everything we do prioritizes that first. If we are able to accomplish the secondary objectives of getting useful information for Starfleet and liberating trapped peoples, I'm all in favor. However, I will not sacrifice one single member of our crew for the sake of the other objectives. Good. If I were to help enumerate our objectives, I believe 1A, return the crew of the Curie back to the ship. 1B, take advantage of the centuries of technological progress that we could gain from this society. To say nothing of what I saw below, above, aside, wherever I was. Not to put too fine a point on it, says Kimani Jiffis, um, but we have yet to establish that the curry is still there. Yeah. I, I will was... not believe <laughs> um, we have lost the thought, ship. I thought like genuinely it, it, it had not occurred to. <laughs> Oh yeah. I was unable to find it. It is caretaker only information. And uh, Jeff is like <laughs> looks like understanding that we all very much strongly want the Curie to still be around. It is entirely possible that we may be marooned here. Listen. Until I Listen. see a corpse, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. I'm only suggesting a well-known <laughs> captain was once marooned on Seti Alpha. <laughs> and the only thing that got him off was the solemn faith that he could, that he would return to his ship. I am not rebuking you here, Chief Engineer. Just let me remind you that in such a situation, one of the most profoundly useful qualities is hope. And you will not take away my hope that all of us will get back to the Curie safe and sound. And then and then and with, a, with a little infused yeah, yeah. Um, kindness, he says, am I understood? <laughs> yes, Captain, I really meant to propose another objective would be to establish the location and state of the USS Curie. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, which I, I did want to backtrack yeah. out of character because <laughs> when Ash, you were looking stuff up, that was checking to see what's uh, in orbit? I'm trying to remember what info... I was trying to find our ship, specifically. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Any information on the Curie, and that was blocked. Gotcha. Yeah, because Kid Neal's next thing is then, if we couldn't find the Curie, let's find us and get star mm -hmm. charts to figure out where the hell we are, what quadrant we're in, what, you know, how far away are we from our last known coordinates? Excellent idea. Um, Commander yeah. Jiffis, I do have uh, an additional question for you, considering what you just said. And it concerns, forgive me, considering my limited understanding of it, it concerns the novel technologies 
you and others were so impressively able to create during the course of our last challenges. Do you think it might be possible to take advantage of some of those insights to create a makeshift subspace communication system that could uh, send a clandestine, no, a surreptitious distress call? It's nature. It's hard to do surreptitious and distress call at the same time. <laughs> I mean, is it, is it broadcast across call all help, frequencies? Right? <laughs> Quietly. <laughs> so I, I have it a V for Vendetta moment. Who are you? I'm wearing a mask. Why are you asking? <laughs> Does it seem like I'm willing to tell you? <laughs> That's right. Um, so Jivis considers for about a half a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, you really thought about and this? And then says, uh, and then say, yeah, this is deep thinking for Jeffus. Um, yes and no. It is certainly possible to build a subspace communications device of some kind. It may even be possible to make it small and portable. The city runs on uh, a plasma power kind of a distribution system. Um, but making it undetectable would be another matter entirely. Mm. Um, any civilization capable of managing a, um, a warp power grid of this size would certainly be capable of monitoring subspace transmissions. Do you think you'd be able to piggyback it, as it were? It's not clear that there are centers? it's not clear that there are subspace transmissions happening. Um, but I could investigate that. Uh, build a detector and see what's happening on the subspace side of things. Please do, as long as it doesn't endanger you in the process. Um, as a corollary to that, it's also possible that I could build something that would um, appear to be background noise, but would, for example, be detected by another starship's navigation array mm. rather than their actual communication system. It would require that their navigator be um, out of the box enough to detect it as a communications rather than just noise, but it is possible that I might be able to disguise it that way. Of course. Yes, I'll figure please. it out. Might I suggest dot 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 dash dash dash. <laughs> it would have to be very basic communications in order to be able to mask it as background noise. And the navigator would have to be aware enough to realize that there was a pattern in the noise. Well, so I simple. Mm -hmm. so, so that's not a, a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. So I I can to summarize, there's two possible paths. I can build one that is very capable of making communications, but would be detected. Or I can build one that would be very difficult to detect, but may not actually establish communications. I think the latter would be the safest option in the present moment. Very well. I will get to work. Thank you. I don't need an actual investigation thing, but was Nerjad able to locate a prison? Oh, yeah. Easy enough to. There are, of course, there's a, a wide variety of races with a wide, wide variety of... Um, instinctive drives and things like that. So there are um, uh, beings that don't incorporate well into the society. Okay. So there is definitely a detention center for those that are unruly enough. Um, it's not like they're, you know, murdered outright. They're still considered valuable members of the society, even if they have, for lack of a better description, behavioral issues. Let loose with the thing on boards. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not, not quite <laughs> that far yet, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Nerjod puts forward to the captain and it's like, well, we may have some uh, unlikely allies. I haven't had a chance to communicate with them yet, but with your okay, I... They're already willing to risk themselves enough to not conform to society, so they may be 
amenable to working with us. Um, I'll have to work through and find who are uh, in a similar situation to ours, where they are aware, unhappy, but are not necessarily um, uh, a danger to work with. And that would potentially provide us with additional allies, depending on how secure they are. We may be able to uh, utilize their services while maintaining a cover, and then, uh, well, they'll be on the list of other people that we need to recover from this planet. Of course, as we've learned, even initial foes can be valuable allies. Considering your aversion to risk, I trust that this is a worthwhile endeavor to explore. So yes, please, you have my support. I won't risk the crew, but yet me? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um... Irulor strokes his chin and says, Hmm... Lieutenant Zekulnen, when your queen expressed some curiosity or started to question the society, how easy was it for you to prompt her to do so? Was it on her own accord, or did it require a lot of questions for you to pose? It required very little questioning, honestly. Mm -hmm. I just posed a question that she had never thought about challenged one of the very just basic tenets of their life. Mm. So I think they are inherently Naive. the potential to be curious people. They just haven't been aware that they could question. Ah. Well. Just for to color that a little bit more, she was also like seemed shocked that the question had never occurred to her before. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't a just a, I never even thought to ask. It's why didn't why I didn't ask? I think of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, considering what we know about them functioning via a meritocracy and the value of consensus, there are two insights that seem potentially useful here. The first is if your queen were to obtain a position of increased status, she might be able to influence the other queens to our advantage. The second is, perhaps you or myself, if I were to obtain an audience with one of the other queens, I could pose some of these questions in the course of sharing company. And I'm just a circle back. That was sort of your vague intention with the manipulation of the trials. Indeed. Was yep. To put either one or both of you in the presence of the queen in a mm -hmm. private setting. That's right. Exactly. For cultural exchange. Yes. Cultural exchange. Um, <laughs> That's what. The but kids if you are wanted to. These days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But if you wanted to take a different swing at that, it might be possible uh, for Lieutenant Colin to um, bring you to her queen. It doesn't have to be her queen. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. if there's a possibility to talk to other queens, considering they're all working, all all functioning via consensus, it's um, if we want to try and manipulate that consensus to have a destabilizing outcome, then I think if we can get them to others to also begin to question things that could work in our advantage. Exactly. Get them to question the caretaker. Mm hmm. Or heck, just their own purposes. Yes, Dr. Hudson. My only concern, both for ourselves and for the queens, is I have yet to understand the timing of a new cycle of gestation. Hmm. Is, is it may sound like a more cynical take than we have been having here discussions so far but if 
the queen's naturally becoming more cognizant, aware, curious of what is happening in their society is a negative outcome for the caretaker. Perhaps that is what they are. Yeah, I've I didn't hear that last statement. You Perhaps that, that is when they are replaced. Ah, so say okay. the retirement plan for a queen is, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant, if you want to ask mm. that question. Yeah, we know the Ascended get immortality. Well. That's how it's described, isn't it? Yeah, yes. that is how it is described. I haven't seen any Ascended walking around these cities. Based on but what you do know that, that your queen is 127 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which, based on your information, is two or three generations of queens at least. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, that's what I was wondering. I didn't know um, if, like, you had these um, queens for a while and then, so they've gotten new ones mm-hmm. since yeah. she's been alive. Okay. Yeah, there's been new ones while she's been here. Yep. Um, but there didn't seem to be a predictable pattern to when a new generation was started. Hmm. The event that seems to kick off that process is the arrival of new, new subjects, um, candidates, right? Um, which uh, appears to be an, um, unless there's some hidden pattern that you guys can't see based on your data, might be opportunistic. Mm-hmm. Right. Somebody falls into the trap. Time to make new queens. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. This seemed reminiscent of something, and I couldn't exactly put my finger on it until Dr. Hudson's investigations. Doesn't all of this, especially the combat trials, the word ascension, and the generation of these, of the queens, seem something like survival of the fittest? Pushed to its, its, pushed to its extreme? Yes. Mm-hmm. Which suggests that if this whole process is to produce beings that have the best traits, then perhaps those who ascend are considered exemplars of the traits that will be used to produce the next generations. And that makes me suspicious about the fate of those who ascend. There is reason the I tra- set you up to win, Captain. The traits don't seem to... Puts a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> you said they make different queens based off of the baseline each time, right? Yeah. The traits don't seem to be put to further test. Hmm. I mean, the queens have a relatively luxurious, easy existence, do they not? Hmm. Some administrative duties, but they... I think the question may be, uh, Doctor, if you can get it from your servitors... What is the purpose? I mean, other than continuation of the sample Mm -hmm. of the ancients, what is the purpose of queens? Perhaps they are taken elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the caretaker doesn't know. And you do know from your investigations that the caretaker does not have um, physical manipulation as far as you can tell. Mm -hmm. So the caretaker needs... Um, ambulatory hands and feet right, right, right. Mm-hmm. to actually do stuff. Right. All it does is give instructions and text and messages right. and things like that, as far as you know. But right, yeah. The- so it's like the society is the machine, and the caretaker mm-hmm. is the operating system, or mm-hmm. something right. equivalent to that. This this seems like something the Romulans would have done, generating soldiers for battle I am curious um, if the changes to the queens are sh- merely uh, opportunistic updates to the caretakers tools I am also curious uh, and this is what I was asking about the servitors if uh, we can locate where the Ascended go. I could also ask my queen. Mm -hmm. She's... Seems to be willing to talk about that. She doesn't... She both does and doesn't want me 
to ascend. Mm. Um, and I will tell you from background that uh, those that have been ascended, um, are chosen for ascension, um, there's records of them living out their normal lifespans. Right? Oh, that's right. You did. Yeah, you just did like amongst yeah. everyone else, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's right. In a, in a position of privilege um, yeah. um, and, and, that's right. uh, and ease. And that's stuff right. Like that. I might um, have misspoken. Cause... And some of them choose to still stay involved in the whole process, um, but they're doing so as honored um, individuals of society. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like um, the Ascended are called or anything like that. And just um, based on context, the survival of the fittest, while an apt analogy, there is no, like, those that fail aren't killed. Sure. Yeah. They're still treated with respect and and um, the Queens look after them sort of uh, sure. uh, from an aspect. Yeah, but the fittest okay. become Ascended. Yeah. yeah. The out fittest of become at, Ascended. Out of yeah. character, um, mm -hmm. I meant that in the context yeah, yeah. of surviving genetic elements, right? right. Which are contributing yeah. to the next generation, which is not a particular insight. Not into social Darwinism. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's genetic biology that Trichelo would totally understand. So. Right, right. Okay. Yep, just want to make sure. Uh, I, I recognize it was an imperfect analogy. Yeah. Oh, this cool. is a complex situation we find ourselves in. Certainly. Oh, those are the most fun. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 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 Do, so, do Jeff make is sure you work on that. Do make sure that you keep extra sets of notes of your particular parts of this adventure. Absolutely. Oh, I have a feeling that Starfleet will have a um, new simulation to send crews through after this. <laughs> this, this will be a large report, yes. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. I think uh, we'll I feel... go ahead, Ash. I feel we should also take notes on our fellow um, keep losing alert for the people on the trial. Initiates. Prospects. Initiates. Prospects. Yeah, prospects. Yep. Because there are people here who we have never seen before. We have no records of. It would certainly be a simple matter for Dr. Hudson and his work in the lab to get bio scans of unknown species for sure and uh, have those as a catalog it'll be on the systems here because you guys don't have personal computing devices of right. your own not yet. Um, not yet although i think somebody picked up uh what was the equivalent of a tricorder yeah, yeah, I, have that. Um, I think you guys have, yeah you guys have one of those so oh, you can actually do that mm -hmm. yeah you're not 100 percent on what the relationship to the handheld device is to the larger network right in the city um, but it appears to be a self-contained apparatus, mm -hmm. so it could be that it would still be secure. Yeah. Um, unless yeah. there's anything oh. else, Captain, I have a bunch well, of... Uh... And, 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 you know, Captain Churchill says, uh, I think we can all trust that uh, the Curie and its crew will once again be in Starfleet Dispatch. Oh, so, yes. Uh, uh, Commander Jiffus, uh, you'll be creating a subspace device. Uh, Dr. Hudson, you'll continue with your investigations into the technology and pursue the acquisition of relevant information as long as it doesn't endanger yourself or the mission. Uh, Commander Kitneal, you'll be pursuing the potential malcontents and erstwhile allies. CD underbelly, yes, sir. <laughs> and Lieutenant Sekolin, you'll continue in your connection with the Queen and explore other opportunities for us to leverage their, or, or, or um, for us to influence them to our benefit. Wonderful. Well then, uh, if that is all for now, uh, I believe I have an interview before the upcoming match. <laughs> <laughs> Which immediately Nerjad puts on, you know, like the heel thing, like there's Blade a shove. The yeah. <laughs> and like gets the colon in between the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure. And he waves somebody on. Somebody can come up and like grab it up and he's like, you won't believe the lows he'll stoop to. <laughs> As he then departs to go find all the little, yeah, the criminal <laughs> element to go hang out with and go find their As leather jackets. Build a stable, baby. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> I don't watch um, wrestling, but you better believe I know the culture. You know the tropes. Yep, that's excellent. <laughs> there we go. 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so did uh, Villa... Any all's going to bring up the right to censor. So was uh, the intent for Villa to take uh, your lord to the queen now, or like arrange uh, your meeting before? So I had a character to be very precise about what I would like to happen for Trichelor if it's possible. Um, either um, uh, Trichelor gets to talk to another queen and bend her ear, or if that's not a possibility, if Lieutenant Zekelnin can get the queen to talk to the other queens and spread on that influence. Irelor would, of course, very much enjoy talking to these fantastic queens and trying to influence them, right? Uh, it's just the goal is to have some social influence happen, in effect, some extended diplomacy, right? By trying yeah. to to change the nature of the conversations they're having and, their, and therefore the consensus they have about their own culture. So Yeah, I like the idea that uh, I keep sort of working on mine and getting her to question further. And then you can also impress the others because at the the bouts Perfect. the other queens are there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and Ooh, see if fine. you can get a meeting with them. Usually there are other queens there to, to pay attention. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Yeah, then great. I like that plan. Um, getting to short in front of another queen would be a little difficult, but if you just wanted to talk to a queen. Mm -hmm. And based on your um, the social structure and your past interactions, if you ask the queen to talk to your lore, there would be why. But based on recent interactions, if you asked to bring your lore to her as a favor to you kind of thing, that might be a more successful avenue to push if you wanted to try that. If you want to speak to another queen, you would have to, um, it's, it's certainly possible it would take some manipulation of events to create a situation where Irelor is in front of a queen in another in another manner. Not impossible, but difficult. Um, so what, which avenue did you guys want to go with that? I have an idea. Sorry. You can okay. shut it down if it doesn't work. I'm sorry, go ahead, Chris. Let's say as a non-arena combatant person, um, I feel like the story of winning a favor in the arena is always the best yeah. option. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So what I'm thinking is, hey, it's challenging to get an audience with another queen, especially if you just ask for it. But if you impress the hell out of another queen and you showboat in front of her, then she might be willing to talk oh, to you. So, okay. yeah, like in a, in a bout, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. you know, wink at a queen, that kind of thing. Right. Oh, and then like, you know, punch somebody's helmet off. Look at her and just go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, walk over and pick up her napkin that she's holding. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that sort exactly. Of that, yeah. yeah, like <laughs> nightly right. combat. Bingo. Um, That's cool. I love it. Uh, so let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Chris and I were on the same page. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so it's not just about winning in this particular mm -hmm. case. No, it is about establishing contact. Yes. Right. And yes. impressing somebody who is, relatively speaking, way above you in the social strata. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not that they don't care about the subjects that work for them in the, because they not. do. Um, but it's, it's making her realize that you are not just a pit fighter. That's right. You are somebody who's worthy of her full attention. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a daring thing to do. I would agree um but it's also while you're fighting trying to intuit what would impress one of the queens that's in the stands okay so i'm kind of thinking that this might be an insight security but you can pitch me another idea mm -hmm. that's more than just physical prowess this is winning in such a way that will particularly impress one of the queens. Mm. Yeah, because this gotcha. is a queen of Some something other, else, yeah. not a combat queen. Yeah. It's like trying a few different moves during your fight to see which one they react to, and then winning okay. in that sort of manner. So there's oh, sort I of see an instinct reading somebody else while you're trying to fight. Okay, that makes sense. Then I'd suggest um, insight command. And the notion is, hey, you need to be thoughtful about the way you're representing yourself. You're commanding attention in order to draw in her eye 
And otherwise, if you already knew, then it'd just be a performance, but you're needing to tease things out and figure it out in the course of okay. it. Okay, yeah, so I'll go for that. Insight command, that works. Okay, fantastic. Uh, do we um, have any momentum? You have some momentum. You have three momentum. Ooh, fantastic, okay. Last die, and do you have any other tools that might give you some additional tie here? Let's see. Um, let's. I think this is in, might be a risky maneuver. Um, it's also hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes, you are trying to do some social maneuvering on somebody third party while winning a fight in such a way as to impress. Yeah, definitely risky maneuver because right. you might end up losing on this. Yes, this could be bad. So, uh, let's see. Do I have anything else? Oh, it's too bad those <laughs> others are. Hmm. Let, let me ask this question. Will the outcome of this vary on a scale like most actions or is it binary? Meaning that if I get a higher level of success, is that going to have a better benefit? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, well, this is what's gonna happen. Uh, Chichalor banked his uh, normal milestone from the last time. So he has one residual determination. Okay. And um, he's gonna recall the time that, um, or not the time, just the, the course of the whole battle with his, you know, Klingon buddy now, right? Mm -hmm. And throughout it, he needed to um, um, demonstrate his presence in addition to his fighting prowess. And so he's going to recall that there are certain Klingon techniques that are an aspect of their culture that he didn't know about until after that. That he gained insight in a, oh, this is how you make fighting entertaining and get people to pay attention to you. Yes. So um, the value he's going to invoke is fortune favors the bold, because this is a bold thing to do. And then he's going to apply that determination, if that's okay with you. So this sure. is what I'd like to do. Okay. I'd like to um, use those two momentum to gain two additional dice. So I'd roll mm -hmm. four dice, and I'd spend one determination. Okay. That sound good? That sounds good. All right, great. Fantastic, thank you. Task roll four dice. This is insight and command. All right, with a determination, we roll in it. Okay. With the complication. Mm -hmm. With the complication. So that's okay. six, six uh, successes with the complication, is that right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you may use some of those successes to buy off that complication if you wish. How much does it cost? I can't remember. Is it one? Two. Two. Ooh. Hmm. I think it's a good idea to get a slightly less success in order to avoid problems because we want progress. So I will accept four successes with no complication. Okay. Fair enough. And let's say this, that uh, maybe I was, in order to flavor it, um, maybe he was making a few mistakes and she wasn't paying attention. And that's when he remembered what he had learned in the previous mission with, with and through Klingon fighting prowess and stuff like this, right? And his determination aided. I think you're gonna like this. All right, cool, great. <laughs> I'm here for it. So you're fighting and you're trying to come up with things, to, and you've got this. You've got one. The queen picked out. Yeah, she's the one that seems the most interested in what's going on. You're like, okay, I'm gonna work that one. Focus my mm -hmm. effort. And you try everything you try fancy moves you try the quick footwork <laughs> you try flashy showmanship it doesn't do anything and and you're like pulling tools out of your toolbox like crazy yeah. <laughs> and the toolbox is empty then mm. you throw the toolbox and, <laughs> and then you remember that for some sometimes in Klingon culture combat can be a porting ritual oh <laughs> So that you're not getting anywhere. You're running out of steam. You're getting tired. You're going to lose this fight. You need to wrap this up pretty quickly. So out of the blue, like a Cyrano de Bergerac, you start to recite poetry while you're fighting. <laughs> like a proper Klingon. Good Andorian like a, like a stuff, proper Klingon. <laughs> yes. and, you know, Because when a Klingon wants to impress some woman, he fights somebody in front of her. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That is so <laughs> And read your poetry. <laughs> and read your poetry. Or recite your poetry. So that's what you do. You proceed to 
engage with this individual while um, like ad-libbing a sonnet. <laughs> um, and that just the audacity of that move as you know, um, you're dodging and you're parrying and you're thrusting in, but you're not beating well, he's him. He's thrusting all right. Yeah. <laughs> you're not beating him because you're not done your poem yet. So you oh, can yeah. you and draw the fight out so you can get in all the stanzas of your poem. Yes. And then as you finish the last line, a big block, 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 bam, and down he goes. And the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> but that queen is like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's very easy for you to manipulate that. Um, uh, she asks for you by name, and you are escorted away after the fact. Um, and you will definitely be having your meeting with like, another queen unrelated to the arenas next time. All right. <laughs> you sure are about to get some bold action, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's going to be some branded genitalia, let me just say oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, just keep in mind that there's definitely some layers of social strata. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. It's a, it's yeah. it's primarily going to be a cultural change first, but I mean, like, who knows? You know? We'll see what happens, right? You you make a favor, make yeah. it a yeah. <laughs> giant woman. <laughs> Thankfully, Dr. Hudson uh, studied in college some of the byproducts of cultural transmission. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a soul. Does he know how to repair uh, crushed pelvises? <laughs> yeah, that's. <right. laughs> I proceeded some notes on you know how to do things when there's a large size disparity. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> um, so the thank spirit you. is willing, <laughs> and the flesh is not yet spongy and bruised. Okay, <laughs> Warden. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us once more. I had such a good time. I hope you did too. Uh, thank you to Roll Twenty uh, for your sponsorship and our patrons. Thank you so much. Um, uh, just that little bit of uh, extra helps us do fantastic things like hire artists who um, are more artwork, which we're getting into very shortly. Um, uh, join us on Discord if you're wondering what all the brandished genitalia is about and when it might actually be necessary to brandish your genitalia. We will not brandish genitalia in Discord. <laughs> Thank no, you, Chris. Are, you know, clear. You know, no pictures. Uh, join us on <laughs> eatinto.space um, to join our Discord. It's just a great community that's awesome people. There's pets and food and music and artwork and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, if you uh, feel so inclined, please support us on uh, Patreon at staylucky.club. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Join Bye. us next time for more bold action.